for rights and freedoms. This catastrophe could leak outside of Ontario and across Canada. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association is here today to demand that the government withdraw Bill 28 and commit to never use the notwithstanding clause to violate human rights. And we call on every government in Canada to actively work for the repeal of this clause. Make no mistake, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association will fight Bill 21 and the invocation of the notwithstanding clause as if our freedom depends on it, because it does. And we invite every person to join us and demand that the government revoke this attempt to destroy our democracy and our freedoms. Bill 28 also tries to trample workers' rights, specific rights, using, instead of fair alternative dispute resolution processes that exist and that have been affirmed by our courts, the government is trying to depict a battle between children and those teaching assistants, custodians, and other education workers who support and help and nurture all of our children and their own children, even as they have had to deal with a wage cap of 1% for years. The real conflict is not between children and the education workers. It is between the government and the workers, with the government holding all the power, both as the effective employer and as the seat of power, the legislator and the executive branch. By imposing a contract, banning strikes, and eliminating meaningful oversight, the government is violating workers' charter right to freedom of association. This is both unconscionable and completely unnecessary. It is not necessary as a measure to keep kids in school. The government says that banning strikes is the only way to keep kids in school. It's just not true. The Supreme Court has stated clearly that there is a fair alternative to strikes, resolving workplace conflicts by going to a fair, impartial, and appropriate arbitrator. Even more concerning, in Bill 28, this government, <clears throat> excuse me, Even more concerning, in Bill 28, this government is dealing with a workplace contract issue by invoking the notwithstanding clause to run roughshod over human rights. It is the third time that this government has used or threatened to use the, the clause to undermine charter protections. If this and future governments continue to use the notwithstanding clause to violate rights and freedoms, if the government is left to get away with it, every person in Canada, regardless of their political opinion, could be left with almost no charter protections at all. Si l'actuel gouvernement et ceux qui suivront continuent d'utiliser la clause dérogatoire et qu'on les laisse s'en tirer ainsi, toute personne au Canada qui vit au Canada pourrait quelle que soit son opinion politique, se retrouver quasi dépourvu de la protection de la Charte canadienne des droits et libertés. This is no exaggeration. The notwithstanding clause could give governments the power to wave away almost every key right necessary to protect our freedoms and our democratic way of life, including, and I'm going to name them because they are so important, freedom of expression, thought and belief, freedom of religion and conscience, protest rights, freedom of the press, freedom of association, privacy, the right to counsel, habeas corpus and a fair trial, the presumption of innocence, equality, life, liberty and security of the person and freedom from torture. Not one of these is safe if the notwithstanding clause is used. Not one of us are safe either. Without charter protection, there may be no way for a court to strike down a law that violates human rights. A public outcry might be our only way to stop government abuse. Sans la protection de la charte, il se peut qu'un tribunal n'ait aucun moyen d'invalider une loi qui viole les droits de l'homme. Un tollé public 
pourrait être notre seul moyen de mettre fin aux abus du gouvernement. We invite every person to join us in speaking out against this threat to our freedoms. As an independent watchdog for rights and freedoms, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association demands that the Ontario government withdraw Bill 28 immediately, that Ontario and every government in Canada undertake to never use the notwithstanding clause to violate rights and freedoms, that every government in Canada pledge to repeal the notwithstanding clause. No government should use the notwithstanding clause to violate rights and freedoms, not in Bill 28, not in Bill 21, not ever. Thank you. The press gallery. Um, are you calling on Ottawa to intervene? And they said they were examining options, so what can they do? Yeah. I, I want to add, sorry, I had one more part of my statement in French, if I may. And that's my mistake, I apologize. En tant que chien de garde indépendant des droits et libertés, l'Association canadienne des libertés civiles exige que le gouvernement de l'Ontario retire immédiatement le projet de loi 28, que l'Ontario et chaque gouvernement au Canada s'engagent à ne, ne jamais utiliser la clause dérogatoire pour violer les droits et libertés, que chaque gouvernement au Canada s'engage à abroger la clause dérogatoire. Aucun gouvernement ne devrait utiliser la clause dérogatoire pour violer les droits et libertés, ni dans le projet de loi 28, ni dans le, pro le, ni dans le projet de loi 21, ni jamais. Merci. Sorry, and I'm, I'm happy to take your questions now. So are you um, calling on Ottawa to intervene? The Prime Minister Trudeau said they were examining options. What should or can they do? We are calling on every government to repeal, Bill to repeal the notwithstanding clause and to do everything in their power to repeal the notwithstanding clause. That is the most urgent matter of business because that is where our rights are threatened. But you said public outcry might be the only way. So technically, what are the options outside of public outcry? Um, do you want to take this? There may be possible legal challenges. That's uh, yet to be determined. Um, but the best place to start would be for governments across Canada to pledge their support to repeal the notwithstanding clause. Federal government has never used the notwithstanding clause. Prime Minister Trudeau appears to be against the use of the notwithstanding clause. Perhaps he uh, can follow that up by saying that, uh, that uh, the federal government would support repeal of the clause. And Prime Minister Trudeau um, talked about the fact that there is a concerning trend that more and more provinces are using it. Quebec did it recently. so. Would you say it's being trivialized? Or how would you phrase it? It is being used in a casual way for a contract negotiation. It is being normalized by its use in the last few years. It is being thrown around as if it is not the nuclear weapon that it is, and we are deeply concerned. We'll go to the phone line. Thank you. Next question is from Jeff Gray at the Globe and Mail. Oh, hi there. Thanks so much for coming in and, and taking our questions. But I wanted just to ask, to expand on that point there, if you could, a little. What what has changed, do you think? Why uh, are governments now, uh, across the country now, using the notwithstanding clause more often? Uh, that's a very good question. I think the reason that governments think they can get away with using the notwithstanding clause is because they have not yet heard enough of a fight. It was actually uh, it was actually not true the first time that this government threatened to invoke the notwithstanding clause. There was a public outcry, and the government did back away from that position. And that is what we expect will happen here. We expect that every person will be concerned and will demand to continue to have a charter, a meaningful charter, a charter that can support our rights and freedoms. 
the concern is that with each use of the notwithstanding clause or each even threatened use of the notwithstanding clause, it just becomes a little easier for the same government or the next government to do the same thing. It just becomes a normal part of political uh, discourse, and that's not what it was intended uh, to be. It was intended to be a rare and exceptional power. And frankly, there's no no uh, no reason to have to have it. We've now had 40 years' experience under the Charter, and uh, the harm that the notwithstanding clause does uh, far outweighs any good that it could achieve. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, that, that gets us to the question. I guess is what, what, you know, is there a uh, a movement uh, that seeks to undermine uh, the Charter? It does seem like there are people. Uh, who advocate for the use of the clause and say it's just part of the Constitution and it's there and it's meant to be used, despite what uh, many experts and the people who drafted it say. Is it realistic, though, to, to expect governments to get rid of it? That would involve reopening the Constitution, and every time we uh, say that, uh, it seems like every politician in the country breaks into hives. You can do a one-off amendment to the Constitution. The formula for amending this particular provision would be 7 and 50, seven provinces with 50% of the population uh, plus the federal government. And I think if enough Canadians make their views known, Canadians are very committed to the Charter. Uh, governments will listen and governments can act. I think that many people didn't give much thought until now to the notwithstanding clause because it was not in use, because it was not supposed to be in use, and it was certainly never intended to be used to violate human rights, to violate fundamental rights and freedoms that are so valuable to each of us. But I think that now as people are waking up to the reality of its use and what it means, I think more and more will be concerned because most people in this country care very deeply about human rights. When they put a little maple leaf on their backpack, that means something. And that something includes decency, it includes equality, it includes freedoms, the true north, strong and free. That's, that's what most people think of when they think of Canada. That's what, that's what we think of. That's what the Canadian Civil Liberties Association stands for. And many people have not yet had to confront the notwithstanding clause and understand just how dangerous it is. But now that they know and now that it is being used casually in this manner, it's 100% time to get rid of it. Further so questions, Steph? No, that's great. Thanks very much to both of you. Worried at all that there's going there's sort of a split between the like provinces who are where are willing to use this and everybody else could end up being like like a serious political divide in this uh, country. I, I honestly believe that most people in this country are deeply committed to the values that are in the Charter. It is extremely popular, our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and I think most people want it to remain a strong protection for every right. Whether your chief concern is equality or your chief concern is your right to protest or freedom of the press, I think most people are very deeply committed to it. Beyond having government speak out about this, should there be more like public protests and more uh, like everyday people coming out and like saying it's what do you want to see regular people do? I think there has to be a public outcry to raise the roof until this bill is withdrawn and until governments pledge not to use the notwithstanding clause and to seek its repeal. People have the opportunity to write to their members of parliament to write to their members of provincial parliament, to the National Assembly, to their legislative assemblies. There can be protests, there can be letters, there can be phone calls, there can be every manner of engagement to make sure that our charter remains meaningful. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms, as we know it, is in danger. That's what is happening. That's why we're here. That's why we are taking this so very seriously. It was the people who supported the charter in the first place in 1982 when it was brought in. Uh, the people across Canada, uh, all parts of Canada, um, overwhelmingly support the charter. I think many Canadians would be surprised to know that their rights, their cherished rights and freedoms can be threatened in this way. And uh, if the people know, make their views known, then that has an impact. If the government, if the provincial government is going to back down on this, they kind of have to do it in the next few hours 
are you confident that'll happen? Given the situation? Uh, We're not here to make political predictions. We're just here to remind Canadians and to advocate for what's right as opposed to what's wrong. Okay. And we are confident what they should do. Any further questions on the phone lines? One more question. Oh. One more question? Okay, that brings our press conference to a conclusion. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.